say that. Okay. Hi, right, everybody. This year, okay, I decided to stop with Shoftim. This year, we're going to discuss the personalities in Sefer Shmuel. Okay, so we're in luck because the beginning of Shmuel is the Haftarah for the first day of Rosh Hashanah. And we're going to discuss not uh, the personalities necessarily in the first chapter of Sefer Shmuel, but we're going to speak about the Tefillah of Chana, which perhaps is the most powerful of the Tefillot which we found in the Tanakh. Now let's start off from the sources. Okay, in the source sheet you've got in front of you, Mishnah says the following. Pesach, or in Pashat Mu'adot Shel Torah Kohanim, on Pesach we read Pashat Emor, Atzeret, Shivat Shabuot, Rosh Hashanah, Chodesh Ashvi Bechad Lachodesh. That means on Rosh Hashanah, we read about Rosh Hashanah. That was the opinion of the Mishnah. That means we learn about Pashat Emor, in Vayikra Parch Erech Hafgimel, that was the opinion of the Mishnah. Later on, Amoraim changed it, or the other Tanaim changed it. And what do they say? No. The Rosh Hashanah says the Gemara in line number 15. Rosh Hashanah b'chodesh shvi'i, maftirin, naftara is from ben yakir Ephraim. Second, what we read the second day. Chapter 32 in Sefer Yirmiyahu. Hey, Shomrim, were who said, Hashem pakad et Sarah. We read the birth of Yitzchak. Maftirim b'chana. We will read chana. Ba'idna, and nowadays, Ikatre yomi, that there are two days. Yom akama, hey, Shomrim. First day, we read the birth of Yitzchak and the birth of Shmuel. On the second day we read Elokim Nisait Abraham Akedah No Maftirim Ben Yakiri Now everything changed. What's so special about Rosh Hashanah is that the Amoraim changed the Kriyat Torah from the Mishnah. They didn't feel the Amoraim they didn't feel that the speaks about Rosh Hashanah had any, any, anything to do with the Neshama of Rosh Hashanah. The fact that we'll read the Chodesh Ashvi'i Be'echad La'chodesh doesn't have any impact on your Neshama. Therefore, they decided to change it. They decided to change it to the birth of Yitzchak, because Yitzchak was born on Rosh Hashanah, and Hashem remembered. And also, the Akedah, because that is the whole concept of Zichronot on Rosh Hashanah. But we have a fascinating insight in to the statement of Rashi. Rashi says the following in line number 20. Maftirim Chana. We read about the story of Chana on the first day of Rosh Hashanah. Lefi shepidata haita Rosh Hashanah. Because Hashem uh, remembered her on Rosh Hashanah. It means her prayer was on Rosh Hashanah. She governed on Rosh Hashanah. And she gave birth to Shmuel because of the prayer on Rosh Hashanah. But Rashi comes along and says, The Akedah of Yitzchak, says Rashi, Mazkirim, they should is called on Hayom Bimbat. Hashem should remember that. What's quite amazing is why do we read why do we read the birth of Yitzchak on Rosh Hashanah? Now, Rashi doesn't say that. All Rashi says is that only the birth of Shmuel has an important part. Also, we know that Yitzchak was remembered. Sarah was remembered on Rosh Hashanah. Says the says the the tzib, is a rush on the Torah. Why doesn't Rashi say the same thing? That we read the birth of Yitzchak because she was remembered on Rosh Hashanah. There's the Natsiv Ishum. They met 
אין בזה טעם להוציא עיקר העניין בראש השנה משום זה. That's not a true reason. The fact that Yitzchak was born doesn't make any difference. He lo tei ma'achi, if that is the case, we know that in one opinion, Yosef went out of, out of the, what's it called? Out of prison on, 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 on Pesach. Vada'i, the reason is, de lo mitam ze korim beleidat Yitzchak. We don't speak about the birth of Yitzchak because that happened on Rosh Hashanah. Ela, says the Natsif, Yishum di Yitzchak, Mashma'o. The word Yitzchak is an act of fact, an abbreviation of three words. First one is, Mashma'o, Yatsa, Chok. L'olam. A statute came out to the world. Yitzchak is an abbreviation of two words. Yatsa chok. What was the Yatsa chok? What does the word chok mean? Says the Nazir. The word chok it doesn't only mean a statute, it means a formal idea. Erush mezone, food. Yitzchak has got the dimension of food. Parnasa. Avodah mekoro haya Yitzchak. The concept of avodat Hashem, parallel to avodat haadama, is parallel to Yitzchak. Yitzchak says the Nitziv is the source of the relationship between man and God when it comes to do with food. Now, what does that mean? Because of that, Rosh Hashanah, on Rosh Hashanah, Chok L'Yisrael Hu, on Rosh Hashanah, which we speak about, the Chukim of Am Yisrael, Rim B'Lei Dato. Reviewer Torah, and in my explanation on the Torah, I explained it in a better way. Now, to understand this, we're now going to speak about, first of all, the Gemara. Look in the Gemara in line number 50. Very famous Gemara. All mezonotav shel adam tuvim lo mirosh hashana v'ad yom ha-kipurim. All the mezonot which a person is going to get in the coming year, all the parnosa. The stock exchange, everything is dependent on the 10 days from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur. Put me on Sa'at, Shabbatot, Vautat, Yom Tov. Except what you spend on Shabbos is on Yom Tov. On Sa'at, Banab, Let's Talmud Torah. And what you spend on education for your children. Shim Pachat, if it was less, bless him. He didn't do enough. He must if we give him. Amal lo Rabbi Avau. Rabbi Avau, one of the great Amoraim of the first generation of the Amoraim said, my Kra'a, where do we learn this from? Iku Chodesh Shofar, Kese Liyom Chagenu. We say in the Pesuk, and we say it every Thursday, and we say it before Shmona Yisrei on Rosh Hashanah. Iku Chodesh Shofar, blow the, on the, in the month of the Shofar, Kese, when it is covered. Ezu Chag, Shara Chodesh Mitkasebo, which Chag, Moon night is hidden. Avi Omer ze Rosh Hashana. Uchtiv. Ichok ki Yisrael hu. Mishpat Eloke Yaakov. My mashma, what does the word chok mean? Lishna mezone. Uchtiv. Vachlu et chukam asher natan lehem paro. They ate their portions which paro gave them. Every single year on Rosh Hashanah, Kodesh Baruch Hu divides up his portions. How much each person is going to get? Hopefully, Israel, on this day, when you blow the shofar, Hashem is going to divide up the guilt, the money, amongst nations and amongst the individuals. This is the idea, says the Natsiv, of Rosh Hashanah, of Yitzchak. Now let's go up to the Natsiv. Line number 32. Before 
before I explain, before I explain and we read the words of the Nuktiv, I'm going to give a short introduction. The only thing which Yitzchak ever does in his life, ever does in his life, is that he works on the land of Eretz Yisrael. He's married by his father. Shiduchim. He's the Akeda. He's put on an altar. Everything is done to him. He is the most passive of all the forefathers. The most passive one. Even the brat which he gives to Yitzchok and to Yaakov and Esau is a shmuchel. He's not even aware of it. He doesn't know what's going on around him. There's only one chapter in Parashat Breshit which speaks about what Yitzchak does. And that is, he's fighting over the wells. Water. That's why Yitzchak is also an abbreviation of the four names of Eretz Yisrael. Yud, Yisrael. Tzadi, Tzvi. Chet, Chayim. And Uf, Eretz HaKodesh. The four names of Eretz Yisrael. The only thing which Yitzchak does in his life is he fights the land of Israel. And the work he does on the land of Israel, the Torah speaks about how much he managed to get out of the land every single year, how much wheat came out, etc., etc., etc. On the other hand, Yitzchak is the forefather who's the korban. He's, he's actual fact a sacrifice. He represents the world of tefillah, prayer. Prayer versus avodat ha'adama, work on the land, versus worshipping Hashem. How much do you work for the sake of Hashem? Now, it says that that is the introduction, Rabotai, which we're now going to speak about how the Natsiv develops it. Why do we read the birth of Yitzchak on Rosh Hashanah? Because Yitzchak is the semer, he's the symbol of this meeting, of this connection between our prayers on Rosh Hashanah, which is for Mzonot, Parnasa, health, and what's it called? And what Kodesh Baruch is going to give you. Says the Natsiv, Yitzchak, Yadua, line number 32. Yadua, who shu al shem atzchok. The David Amelech says, Ushvuato le Yitzchak. Anybody who's ever, ever read the brocha, which we say on the bit milah, will know that the brocha of Yitz, where we say, after the Brit Milah, the statement is Ushvuato le Yishak. Laughing, Shok. Omnam Chazal, the Rabba, or Sifu. Ukeshu, Yitzchak, Yatsa Chok Lolam. Rashay Tevot of Chok. Tadi Chok, Yatsa Chok. Bemet Yesh Lahavin, Mise Gufa, the David Ama Baruch Hakodesh, Am Yishak. In Tehillim, it's written, Ushvuato the Yishak. And in Divra Yomim, it's written, Maroto Amamar, Ushvuato the Yishak. Where does this appear? If anybody notices, every single day we say, after Baruch She'omar or the Minag Sfarad, we say Hodu. Hodu is in actual fact, a section which is mentioned in two places in the Tanakh. The first one is in Tehillim, and the second one is in Ivraya Yomim. They are parallel. They are exactly the same. We say the one from Ivraya Yomim. If you compare it to the one in Tehillim, you will see there is one difference. The name Yitzchak. In Tehillim, the parallel, it's written, Shvuato, 
Le'yitzchak. Sorry, in Divra Yomim it's written Le'yitzchak, and in Tehillim it's written Ushvuato Le'yitzchak. The sin and the tzadi interchange. They are both sounds which are from the tongue. Sir, please take note. Sir, sir, z. They are the same. And that's why, for instance, if you want to know the word for a window, it's called Sohar. It's also called Zohar. Both of them are letting in light, etc., etc. These three consonants are interchangeable. The Tzadi, the Zayin, and the S, Samach or the Sin. They are both consonants which are created from the teeth and the tongue together. Okay, now, let's go, and that's why people who are, uh, what's the name for it? What's it called? Uh, no, uh, I've forgotten anyway. A lisp. People who lisp can't say the tzadi zayin samach properly. Please take note. Lisping is because they have the inability to create, differ, differentiate between the shin, sin, Tadi zayin. Sh, s, t, z. That's the word Yitzchak, and that's why it's interchangeable. Yitzchak and Yitzchak. Now, says the Natsiv. Mize Muchach in line number 35. Mize Muchach. Yesh Mze Shtei Avanot. Two ideas. Bamar Oto Hashem. And he says the same name, Lufi Ainyan. Umitchila Yesh Lahavin Perush. Yatsa chok le'olam. That means, Yatsa, the partition. The way Hashem parts out and gives out his division to the world. Shu'u l'ishner de mazone. V'hainu mishum di Yitzchak haya yesod le'parnasa mashkacha pratit. Yitzchak is the symbol of parnasa from divine, direct divine providence. Vera Akadosh Baruchu Beleidat Yitzchak. And Hashem showed the miracle of the birth of Yitzchak in this way, because Yitzchak now becomes the prime person, the prime individual, the prime forefather who has this connection between miracles, divine providence, and creativity. Yitzchak is the Av. And that's why the Natsiv says, we read the birth of Yitzchak. We read the birth of Yitzchak on Rosh Hashanah. Therefore, the principal idea of Rosh Hashanah is Fila vis-a-vis what Hashem gives you. The Yom Hadin on Rosh Hashanah speak out. What Hashem is going to give you on Rosh Hashanah, L'chaim v'lo l'amavet, l'ra'a v'lo l'sova, etc., etc., etc. That's the day when HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives out his gifts. Now, the one who developed the idea like this is Chana. And that's why we have the birth of Yitzchak, which is in actual fact in a hint way, not direct. Now comes the direct way. Chana. Now, says a Chazal, following. Hani Sheva de Shabta. Seven brachot on Shabbos. Neged me. Line number 55. Amar Abi Chalafta ben Shaul. Neged Sheva Kolot Shamar David Amalamayim. We say, that's why we say the Tfilah, Tila on Shabbos, Zvola David, Havul Hashem Bnei Elim, Havul Hashem Kavod Vaoz. There are seven kolot there. Hani Teisha de Rosh Hashanah, the nine brachot on Rosh Hashanah, the three first ones, the three end ones, and Oyot Zechonot Veshofarot. Keneged me, says Chazal. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak de Min Kartigan. Keneged teish askarot sh'amra 
Chana Bitfilata. The nine times the name of Hashem is mentioned in her prayer, which we'll read later on. Nine times Akotosh Bochu is mentioned. Damar Mar, Rosh Hashanah, Nifkeda, Sara, Rachel, Bechana. On Rosh Hashanah, Hashem brought pregnancy to three women Sarah, Rachel, Bechana. Perhaps the most fascinating idea on Rosh Hashanah is the idea of women governing. Women are the central theme of Rosh Hashanah. Take note. The first day we speak about Sarah and Hannah. The second day we speak about Rachel. So we have Sarah, Rachel and Hannah, and Rachel Bevaka al Baneha. Meana Lehinachem. Then we have one more woman who's an integral part of Rosh Hashanah. That is the mother of Sisra. Tosfot say we blow a hundred kolot on Rosh Hashanah because of the hundred kolot which Sisra's mother cried. Sisra's mother, she was crying after she heard that her son had been killed. Mea iot, mea a hundred sounds. And that's why we have a hundred kolot. Women are the central theme. The governing of women are the central theme of Rosh Hashanah. A boy sign, not men. Forget about the men on Rosh Hashanah. Women. And who is the central person who prays. The central person who prays is Hana. Now, let's go through how many times there are expressions of Hana, of prayer. The He Marat Nafesh, Atit Palel Al Hashem Uvachotiv etc., etc. She makes a neder. Vayehi ir betalit palel pene Hashem. Medaberet aliba. Eshpoch et nafshi. Sha'alti meimo. Lit palel el Hashem. Lit palalti. Atit palel chana. You have six times, sorry, five times the word fila. Sentence it's Suk Yud, Pasuk Yud, Suk Chavav, Suk Chavzain, Suk Aleph. You have the Daberet Al Liba. She's speaking to herself. She's doubling to Hashem. And Ba'eshoch et Nafshi. She pours out a soul. And she expresses the question. Therefore, Hazal Sihana is the pinnacle of prayer. The pinnacle. What did Hazal say? The beginning of the fifth period of Brachot. Amar of Hamnuna, line number 75. Ama Hilcheta Gvrta. So many halachot, important halachot. Ikele mashma mehani kratechana. Which we can learn from the Psukim which speaks about the Tfilah of Chana. Chana, Medabert al-Liba. Mekan, Mitpalel. Tarek shi'chaven libo. You're speaking to your heart. Your heart is speaking. Sfateha, Naot. Mekan, Mitpalel. Shi'achtoch bisfatav. Not something only which you think about. You have to express it. You have to use words. It's just not remaining your thought. You have to have the expression, the words. You translate your thoughts into words. A person should scream out that everybody should hear. No, Rabotai. A person speaks quietly. Hashem listens. 
nobody else is. It's this dialogue, it's this personal dialogue between me and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. If somebody is governing, don't stand in front of him. Because that way takes away his kavana. Etc., etc., etc. The shana becomes the example of prayer. Let's just carry on one more stage. Let's look at how Chazal understood the prayer of Chana. The prayer of Chana is the following. This is in the second chapter. Women have to govern. In her prayer, in her final prayer, Born, uses 18 expressions, 18 expressions, nine times the name of Hashem, the 18 expressions of praising Hashem. Rama Kauni Bashem, again Abraham. Hashem me mitu machaye, machaye meisim. En kadosh kashem. El HaKadosh. Kel Deot Hashem. Achonen. Nichshalim. Avonam. Azruchayel. Those who fail in their sins. It's strong again. Harutze B'Tshuva. Morid Sha'ol. Somebody who HaKadosh Baruch Hu puts down. Perhaps lifts him. Why? Because he's Amar Beli Sloach. Tamachdi B'Shuatecha. Well, Yisrael. Kimi Me'afar Dal. People of Corona. Down. All alone. ofchollim <laughs> Eighteen expressions Hazal see as the basis of all the eighteen brachot which we have. So we have three dimensions of Chana. We have pouring out of her soul. Hashem answers the prayers. We have the laws which we learn from Chana. Then finally, how Chazal built up the makeup, the 18 brachot de Shmona because of the 18 expressions of Chana. Questions? Anybody have any questions, please? We're going deeper and deeper now. This is just the framework. The framework of the Tefillah of Chana. If there are any questions, please, you can write up in chat, whatever you want. Um, um, I've got chat on. Okay, and I'll answer. Let's go one stage further. Chana speaks to her heart. What was her prayer? Amar Rabbi Elazar, Mishum Rabbi Yossi Ben Zimra, Liba. Something which was deep in the heart. Amra lefanav, ribono shel olam. Kol ma shebarata b'isha, whatever you created with a woman, for a woman, lo barata davar cher levatala. Hashem didn't create it stam. Inayim lirot. Eyes to see. Oznayim. Here is listen. Chotem knows la riach. E le daber. Yadayim la sot bem lacha. Raglayim la loch bahem. Yadayim la nik bahem. My breasts, in order that I can feed my child. Yadayim halalu. My breasts, in a tata alibi. 
if you put on your heart, my heart, lama, lo lahanik bahem, not to be able to feed my child, only ben lahanik bahem. This was her prayer, the way Chazal see what she was asking. Now, what's the depth of this prayer? What is it? What is the depth of this? What she asks from Akadosh Baruch Hu. Ezra took a fascinating insight. A fascinating insight. Misha Yisakel Otsem Hashkachat Hashem Yitbarach Aprati. Somebody who, let's say, will close his eyes from, from the idea that Akadosh Baruch Hu is divide individual providence. Yecholito, make a mistake. Shekoch abriya, yelech yiklalut. That the creation goes in a general manner, in a macro style. The Yivra lifamim, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu will sometimes create something, am davar shelo yimale tafido. Something which has got no purpose. It's if you look in the macro world, will find, perhaps, what? That something, I don't know why Hashem created him, created it. This is a famous story of David Melech. why he created a mosquito, why he created, goodness knows what, flies. Why does HaKadosh Baruch Hu do it? Anybody who looks at this doesn't understand the purpose of each individual creation. Om Nam says Rav Kuk, Mistakel Yafe a skill. No accident. Anything which is created, nivra is created in its style, in its special way. To fulfill your purpose. If sometimes a person can't fill up his purpose, some reason for it. Or perhaps the sun. Or to awaken somebody to govern. Everything is connected to the way HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world. Man and woman were both created by Hashem. And if we are to say that there is a macro thing, one would think that the reason HaKadosh Baruch Hu created breasts is that a woman would be Inverted commas 20 times over, sexy. Anybody who looks at the general thing, the difference between a man and a woman is that a woman was created sexy in order to make a man want to be with her. Says Rav Kook, it is a mistake. Everything is exact. Every single individual. Therefore, says Chana, because I know that Akosh Bochu created every single thing in a person's body for a purpose. And every individual is for a purpose. Therefore, she says, Since breasts were created, not to make a woman, in inverted commas, 20 times over, sexy. There is a purpose. Because other, the other, the otherwise, baby wouldn't be able to live. And there is this special connection between mother and child. What creates the special connection between mother and child is the fact that the only source besides the child coming out from the mother 
there's something more than that. Even when the child is alive, he, he cannot live without his mother. And therefore she says, How can I'm asking Hashem, she says, give me that power of feeding my child. What Hana is telling us here, that's the most important message. Every single human being in the world, in every part and parcel of the human being, there is a purpose. There is a purpose. She wants to express it in a particular way. But this is just a mashal, it's just a parable, something far greater. But if Nehemiah Taylor was born in a certain year, to a certain parent, in a certain country, then there is a purpose. Says the Mishnah in Masechet Sanhedrin. Anybody who's ever read the fascinating book of Rav Soloveitchik, Yemei Zikaron, Days of Memory, this is taken from him, what I'm going to now say to you. And here Rav Kook, Rav Soloveitchik, meet. How did they used to threaten, line 125, how did they used to threaten witnesses to tell the truth? on witnesses who are testifying on capital punishment. They used to bring them into the court. To threaten them. Shema tomru, lest you will say, omed u mishmua. Perhaps you, imagining to yourself, you're not sure circumstantial evidence. Perhaps you heard, with this way, is, we heard them from a, faith, uh, a person whom we can trust. Or perhaps you thought we wouldn't check you up. Line number 130. Monetary matters are not like capital punishment. Monetary, monetary matters. When you are testifying against somebody who's liable capital punishment, remember, it's his blood, and the blood of all future generations that you're trying to cut off. Those future generations are dependent on your testimony. If you're telling the truth or you're not telling the truth. Sheken Maxino, Sharag, Ain Sharag et Achiv, Sheneemar, Me Achicha, Soakim. Blood of your brother is crying out, but crying out in the plural. What does it mean? It should be Dam Achicha Soak. The blood of Heather is crying out. No, the Torah says. Shem says to him, it's in plural. The bloods of your brother are screaming out. Now comes the crux of the matter. Nivra Adam Yichidi. one man. Somebody who, 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 who destroys a soul is as if he killed the whole world. created many people. What would have happened? My father's greater than your dad. What was in schools? Adam Arishon was one person. There was no competition. Adam 
כמה מטבעות בחותם אחד. A person can make many coins and they all be similar. ומלך מלכי המלכים, הקדוש ברוך הוא, טבע כל אדם בחותמו של אדם הראשון. ואין אחד מהם דומה לחברו. Not one person is similar to another one. לפיכך, כל אחד ואחד חייב לומר, בשבילי נברא העולם. Because of me, the world was created. So therefore, let's go to one stage. If there would have been a Nehemiah Taylor 500 years ago, exactly with the same DNA, exactly the same makeup, exactly the same logic, and exactly the same, I'm an exact copy of who I was 500 years ago, I cannot say Bishvili Nivra HaOlam. You can't say that. Why not? Because if there's an exact copy of me, then Kodesh Baruch Hu didn't create the world for me. The very fact that every single individual, every single individual is special, and there was nobody like you from the creation, time of creation of the world till the end of the world means to say that you have a special kid. That's what Ashkacha Pratit means. Ashkacha Pratit in actual means every part of my body, and every part of my essence is special. And there was nothing like it before and there will never will be. If there is, can't say Bishkilini Braulam. That is what Hana says. If I have something special, there is a utility for it. If I'm here in the world at a special age and a special time, a special year, then I have a special job to do. There is a certain tafkid on me. That's the first message of Hana. When Hana goes to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and says to him, I want a son, it's because only I can give a, I can give this world a shmur. Nobody else will give away. Only I can. And if I have breasts, and I've got the ability to feed this special person who's given me Shmuel. That is what a person does for Rosh Hashanah. That is the essence of the tefillah on Rosh Hashanah. Am I fulfilling my purpose or not? That is what Hashem is judging a person on Rosh Hashanah. He's judging a person on Rosh Hashanah. What Parnassah is going to have? And is that person fulfilling specific purpose and on that is judged now let's go one stage further that is Hana shouting out to HaKadosh Baruch Hu begging HaKadosh Baruch Hu right that's stage number one okay now let me just make it bigger one minute sorry hold on Are there any questions Please, oh, are there any questions? Please, anybody can speak whatever you want. This is the essence of Rosh Hashanah. The essence. Anybody got anything? Please do. Don't be shy. Shala, you can ask to unmute, please. Nothing. Okay. Let me go stage one further. Next part, which I want to speak about, the other side of Hana. The other side of Hana is following. Is Shira. Esel Shirot Neemru Ba'olam. Line number 145. Ten songs were said in this world, beginning of Shira Shirim. Shira Rishona, first song, was said by Adam Arishon. Et shenimchalo avono. Va yom ha-shabbat, again alav. On the day when Adam Arishon sinned, Hashem forgave him, and then came Shabbos. Yad tachetiv amar, is more Shir Liyom HaShabbat. Is more Shir Liyom HaShabbat is the song which was written by Adam Harishon. 
Next one. Tirashniya. Amar Moshem Bnei Yisrael. Ve'et shekara lehem Adon HaOlam, Tiam Suf. Tchu kulam ba'amu yachada, ba'amu shira, Moshe Neymar, az yashir Moshe. Tirashlishi, the third song. Amar Bnei Yisrael, ve'et shekara lehem Be'er Miriam, Moshe Katuv, az yashir Yisrael. Tura Revi'it. This week's parsha. Amar Moshe Anavi. שהגיע זמנו להיפטר מן העולם. הוכיח בה את בית ישראל, כמו שכתוב, עלינו השמיים ועד הבירה. בצונג, כתבו לי את השירה הזאת. השם, says to משה רבינו, tell עם ישראל האזינו. שירה חמישית, אמר יהושע בן נון, כשיצא למלחמה בגבעון, when he went out to fight in Givon against Ai, אמרו לו, עמדו לו השמש והירח, and the sun and the moon stopped for 36 hours. עצרו. לומר שירה, פתח פיו אמר שירה. He then got up and said a song to השם, כמו שכתוב, אז ידבר יהושע על השם. שירה שישית, אמרו ברק ודבורה, יום שנתן השם סיסרה, את חילו, ליד בני ישראל, כמו שכתוב, אשה שר דבורה, דבורה סינג. שירה שביעית, the seventh song, אמרה חנה, בעת שניתן לה בן את השם, כמו שכתוב, תתפלל חנה ברוך ברוך נבואה, סונג. שירה שמינית, אמר דוד המלך, על כל הניסים שעשה לו, פתח פיו. שירה תשיעית, אמר שלמה המלך, שירה עשירית, עתידים לומר בני הגלות. אין סונג. חנה is the seventh one. חנה teaches us how to beg. How to beg. מדברת על ליבה. She begs. She teaches us how to beg from a Kodesh Baruch Hu things. She teaches us how to shout in a quiet way. She also knows But to thank Hashem. Very few people have the ability to do these things. That is the objective of the Tzilat Chana. Chana, the beggar, the one who teaches us to ask from Hashem things. She teaches us how to praise Hashem. And then finally, let's go to the last stage. Last stage is, why Chazal see that she teaches us how to daven on Rosh Hashanah? Nine askarot. Nine times she mentions the name of Hashem in her final prayer, her shira. The question is, why the number nine? What's so special about nine? Let's look at it. It's the only time in the year where we have nine brachot. You either have 18 or we have seven. Yom Kippur, we have seven. You only have seven brachot. Shabbos, we have seven. Rosh Hashanah, we have nine. Machuyot, Zichronot, and Shofarot, we have nine. Now what's so special about the number nine? And Chazal wanted to teach us. What does she teach? What does it teach us? Now, again, a letter from Rav Kook, a fascinating explanation. Lumat klal harabim. When we speak about Indian, we speak about the number 10. 10 creates another set of numbers, new unit. Until then, We are units. לעומת כלל הרבים, שהוא מתייחס למצפה עשר, שורת חלת הכלל, מתייחס היחיד של כל אחד ואחד מהרבים במספר תשע. The last of the units is number nine. Therefore, we want to speak about each individual who use nine. Nine is the symbol of the individual. Once you move over 10, you become a minion. Until then, 
each one is an individual. And until you have 10 individuals, you can't create a cloud. You can't create 10 people to govern. Each one then is an individual. There was no difference between one person, two people, three people, four people, five people. Because until you get to 10, we are all individuals. Okay, therefore, Shebiksha, Okay, Hana, Shebiksha, Shiyase Hashem Itbar Chefza Prati, Yase Nes, Lutzorech Yachid, Lemala Miderech Hateva Haklali Bechas Eleha. When we're speaking about individuals, we always speak about Hashem doing miracles in Klal Yisrael. Look at look what's written in the Torah. You're going to have food, you're going to have, they're all written in the plural. The brachot of Bakadosh Baruch Hu are always given to a people. They are given to an individual. Until we see, Rambam says, there's no such thing HaKadosh Baruch Hu is angry with Am Yisrael, and on this certain person, he's going to put a cloud there, the rain. That's not the ways of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Chana is the one who teaches us, yes, there are miracles for the individual. There are miracles for the individual. HaKadosh Baruch Hu changes the laws of nature, individuals. Lachen, therefore, Shebiksha Chana, line 165. Chana Shebiksha Hashem Yitbarach. Chefza Prati, her own personal desire. Biyase Nes, Lutzorech Yachid, Emala, Miderech Ateva Klali Bechas Elea, Iskira Teisha Askarot Bitvilata. He mentions nine times Akurush Borchu's name. Lumat Ashkacha Aprati Taishit. Further against or in relationship to absolute divine individual prophet, uh, individual providence. Barosh Hashana. Now comes Rav Kook and says, Barosh Hashana, Shekol Ba'e Olam Ovrim Lefanav Kivnei Maron. Every single one of us comes in front of Kurush Borhu. We all stand in a queue and we come on the screen of Akurush Borhu in Zoom. Okay, Akurush Borhu knows everybody. Everybody is on his hard disk of Akurush Borhu. But Rosh Hashanah, it doesn't go, it's not, it doesn't remain in the hard disk. It remains, it comes all of a sudden on the screen. There, this individual stands in front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu all by himself. Nobody else is there. He's an individual. It's frightening. Therefore, Barosh Hashanah, absolute divine individual providence. We need to understand what this means. You have to understand this concept. To improve our individual behavior. To ask our from the individual comes the cloud. She you call a prati mutzlachim when each individual will be will be uh, will be uh, succeed. How can therefore nu as it at filot am kein bispar eisha? That's why he made the tefila benai. Chana started off by saying women are the Prime prayer, people pray. Women teach us how to pray. And Hannah is the woman, woman who taught every single individual how to pray. She taught us what it means, individual divine prophecy. She spoke about her individual 
parts of her body. She speaks to us as an individual. She teaches us how to cry to Akush Baruch Hu. She teaches us how to think to Akush Baruch Hu. And that's why the Haftarah of Hana becomes the integral part of the prayers on Rosh Hashanah. Without Hana, we didn't, wouldn't know how to daven. We wouldn't know how to daven. And therefore we have these four women on Rosh Hashanah who teach us. We have Sarah giving birth to his changes the laws of nature. We have Hana, we have Rachel, Rachel Mavaka Albaneha. Rachel cries. Yaakov Avinu doesn't cry. Rachel cries. She knows how to cry. Chana teaches us how to daven. And then the final woman, Sisra, the mother of Sisra, who cries and cries and cries over the child, doesn't fulfill his tafkid, his yiud. That, Rabotai, is what I wanted to learn with you, Erev Rosh Hashanah. How the tefillah of Chana becomes the central focus of the davening of Rosh Hashanah. I wish you all Shana Tova, Ktiba Vachatima Tova, Brachot, a lot of health, a lot of satisfaction from everybody, from the grandchildren, from the families, every single one of you, and hope that in Mitzah Hashem, Hashem will answer all our prayers. Thanks very much.